everybody, I'm Tyler Edlin, illustrator, concept artist, and instructor. And today I'm here with my good friend, Antonio Steparts. We each participated uh, last spring in the Art Station Challenge. Uh, it was Camelot, King Arthur themed, and we both kind of placed all right. So today we'll be each giving uh, a few tips on how we did. Up first will be Antonio. He'll be showing what he created, a little bit of how he did, and of course he'll be providing tips on characters for challenges. I'll be following that up with a few of my tips for the environment side of things. So hopefully there'll be a little bit of something for everybody in here. That said, let's begin. Don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Todd. Thanks for having me again. It's uh, it's always a blast to be here. Um, so yeah, you asked me to, to put up some tips um, to do well in the challenge. Um, and I think like the first one that came to mind is that um, you need to stick to your story. Um, so when you when you see this challenge, when you see a challenge online uh, and you want to run with it, I think you should make up a little story for yourself, just a little bit. Doesn't have to be much. Just it could be one sentence, could be something simple. Like for me, um, with the King Arthur challenge, it was um, taking the the narrative that we have from King Arthur and then putting it in an in another era. Um, so this was a Roman Gallic era, um, and then just just playing with those designs. And so with your designs, did you really reference the original texts and the resources on like Wikipedia's and stuff? Yeah, and that's where you can, can get your inspirations from, right? Um, and that, what I see a lot of times from other people is that they start with an idea, and then they get inspired by other ideas, and they fuse that into their artwork. Um, which kind of makes it muddied and not co coherent. So what I would say is just stick to your one story from the beginning and this design um, following that narrative. So basically you're not going too, too far out of your way to get uh, the resources needed and that the art station in this case did provide you with some uh, material. Yeah, I... Um, the thing that was really cool this this challenge that ArtStation provided was they provided a lot of source material um, from the French original stories, I think, from King Arthur. Um, so we were able to go through them, read about them, and then um, I just took I took some pieces from it uh, and then just ran with it. Um, like um, I took some of the the character traits from um, Morgana and Nininue um, and just played with them a bit. Um, and they have different elements and different stories and there were different twists of the story. So you can, you, you had a real variety of, of options to do for your designs. So it was really, really cool. Um, Would you like to bring us into uh, how your creative process uh, evolved through this? Uh, if I go to my submission for, a, because I, this character design challenge, I really handled it because I was in a very busy time at the moment. So I really handled them just by doing them as morning warmups. I wanted to be a part of the challenge because I really liked the narrative. Um, so I just, um, I poured them into my morning warmups. I just, um, just saw what I got, you know, whatever I got out of my morning sessions, I would do. And I would run with, run with it. So that's not the best. <laughs> In terms of if, if, I went, if, um, if I was to play my own art director, it wouldn't be the best thing because I, I barely did any iterations or um, I barely made any new ideas. But as you can see, I think I started with something really rough. Yeah, so... Usually my morning my morning warmups will start off with like something like this, very scribbly, just finding some gesture, finding some general shapes and designs, and then I'll just flesh them out. Well, I would I would actually suggest anyone to go to the through the process. Um, if you want to if you want to do really well in this challenge, I would because it's a design challenge. You want to give the judges. Um, your you want to give them an insight into your thought process so you want to do a lot of iterations a lot of design processes but but because i did them in, in morning sessions and not during during work i just i had to do one iteration and then just run with it but because i've been doing so many characters for such a long time now um i kind of 
can get a feeling for what I want and then just run with it. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, they, they turned out really well with that. I think, yeah, it's I think it's a natural process you kind of have to feel. But um, in terms of, like, for instance, I made Mordred, like, the bad character in the narrative. Initially, he was this character, which I later made into King Arthur. Because in my in my opinion, he fitted the King Arthur character much better. So I had to redesign Mordred, uh, which I did here, to give him more of that shape language of an evil character and this and that. So it it might have been quicker for me when I just iterated Mordred um, in the beginning. I might have come to this solution a lot quicker than I did uh, molding it over over a couple of days. And I think uh, lastly, the last tip, well, maybe two, but... Um, especially if you want to do well in this, in this, in these sort of challenges, especially design challenges, is that you have to show everything that describes your process. Um, like when I look at your stuff, it's it really describes how you went from A to B, from B to C, and then to your final design. Um, and you want to show people the the love for the craft that you have as well. Um, so that would be be my. That would be my third tip. And as a last tip, it's like specifically to character design. If you want to be a character designer, really design characters and not costumes. I see that all too often with people that want to design characters is that they make the same poses or just like people have same face syndrome um, where every character has sort of this, the same manga face or the same expression, the same pose, same um physical attributes and then they just create different um costumes for them which isn't technically character design like when i think of character design i think of actors like if you have like a brad pitt or a leonardo DiCaprio, they can play different characters because they are that actor and you can put them in any costume and they will create a character so i think that you really need to think about designing an interesting looking character and then giving them the appropriate costume. Yeah, I think that's what most of the like well-performing artists do really well is that they have, even in a thumbnail view, they have something interesting in there. Yeah, and that that is part of like my first tip is when I was designing out my little set here, some of them were used, some of them were not used, some weren't even finished, but I was always looking at them from like I, I call it like the cell phone test like how how big would this even look like on a cell phone because a, a lot of the time I first find or discover new artists is on the cell phone yeah that's the first time I'm ever exposed to their work so it's like I'd want it to look really really good really small and I know for environments yeah. that have you know lots of depth where they might have moods and emotion and of course the subject matter you have to kind of get all of that yeah. off with like an instant right so it's like if you if you're making or you're making the audience work for any of that longer than like a second then then you've already lost them you're not even going to get that initial click and there's that so I, I can never stress the importance enough of making the image work uh well really really small and and that kind of came yeah, for absolutely. me on this my first actual tip would be art directing like i decided early early on with this since i was always racing against the budget of time like a lot like i think i joined two weeks or it was a couple weeks after it already started because i had discovered it and i was like oh that's kind of that's kind of up, up my interest level so i and i had a bunch of yeah. rough castle sketches laying all over the hard drive because i do a lot of them for my classes so i i took a few of my favorite ones i could apply to the challenge but i decided early on okay i'm gonna go with bright and and bold and simple so I try to like those three words. I try to like wrap them all together with a fairly animated or Ghibli look. And and in a sense, like you said, like you have to be your own art director, and, and have a vision for when you're making a series of image when you want consistency to them. So I had I had yeah. you know in one folder loads of references of castles, chateaus, chateaus, fortresses, and of course towns. But on the other folder. It was loaded with animation backgrounds, simple stuff from Disney, again, things from uh, Ghibli. And I was trying to, you know, not emulate them one for one, but I was trying to at least imbue a little bit of that spirit and energy that they have right into my own set. So it all started for me on that, just deciding a direction to go in 
and hopefully you can apply that to multiple images and not have it kind of just come off as a one-off sort of thing. No, and you can see it in the finished result that those three simple words kept you really consistent in the overall output of the finished drawings. Like they really look like they're part of the same world. And to balance out, like I, these are maybe about as average level detail as my stuff goes. I have a lot of stuff that gets not quite as detailed and stuff that gets a little more detailed once in a while. But this is like my median level of detail that I, or time, which I think for me on these may have floated somewhere about 10 to 15 hours a piece which is right. like pre after that right. i'm really competing against my own attention span and i can become my own worst enemy so i i try to say yeah. what i have to say early on and then see what time is left for polish which is i think my second tip here and i would say this is for any good uh, amount of environment design sort of things not so much simple detail and callouts but start simple and, and don't focus on those details. And I said that for these because it helped, you know, get that the bold, that impactful read. And I, I had just some like you, you were doing here with my process. Most of these scenes, most of these images, purely just started off as uh, see with some of the some of the process here, which I think I have the full thing up on the YouTube on a different video if you guys want to enter. But it literally just started as cylinders, squares, rectangles, and cones, right? All the very basic primitive shapes. So whether I'm gonna have a 3D approach or whether it's just come down to the raw drawing of it, I was simply just approaching it extremely simple because like the texture or the color of that roof or the finish around the door on the gate is absolutely non-consequential in many of the earlier stages. And you gotta, like you did with your characters, right? You have to focus on your core shapes so you can in the flow for an environment is going to work and so that's why i have a lot of the contour i think those are contour lines when i'm drawing my shapes and cylinders because i want to see how that form is going to ultimately push that viewer's eye in and around and through my scenes and i've, I've found recently that yeah. you know that really does help you know get the idea and the expression down quicker than you know, quicker rather than later yeah and if you look at the if you look at this from an an art director standpoint is that they really love to see this because they can they can simply follow your process they know how you break things down and they can um if if, if they were thinking about hiring you they would know what to expect and what they would get that's in return. the biggest thing with portfolios is is consistency is key because they don't want to be surprised maybe they want to be surprised with like having a really amazing work but at the end of the day they don't want to be surprised they almost want to know exactly what they're going to get yeah. regardless of your discipline characters environments props yeah. they want to know what like when you go to the store to you know you want to know if you're buying that watermelon it's going to be a good watermelon or, or if you're in, i think there's a bigger thing in nowadays culture with movies where like a lot of people have yeah. certain expectations for movies and when they don't meet them they come out you know pretty bum hurt which is like a whole separate thing Absolutely. we won't go into that but yeah it's it's managing expectations in a, in a certain way when it comes to yeah. art and design that that works a little differently in that regard so my last tip will be set your own restrictions whether that is how far you're going to finish an image whether that's going to be the style of it the the challenges are great environments to grow because they provide a certain amount of restrictions and themes already but you can get even more out of that when you start adding your own so I th again for me it was just going with certain s uh, amount of simplicity minimizing details and that's what I was trying to do with some of the call outs, you know, like on this one and such. I was I was just keeping it like I want to have a fun layout. So from my restriction with these, I was always trying to set up a fairly cool layout for for these buildings and yeah. structures, whether it's on the side of a cliff, you know, at the edge of a lake, whether it literally has this is this was a scrapped idea, but having like a waterfall running directly you know through it and it becomes a divider of sorts you know distributing yeah. water to the different uh, feudal lords and things like that i don't know i got a little off track but cut trying to come up with cool layouts for for an environment scene can add a lot of flavor to to what the design is too so i guess it's like having a cool character but also having like a really cool costume on that character part of the environment's costume is where it's situated and that and i was trying to add yeah. that in when i was setting up my my own restrictions and i was always trying to do something 
uh, you know, these had to feel grounded, I think, first and foremost for the story. If you're doing, I've seen some entries that had, like, floating land masses, and they really got out there with the idea. And I don't think for, for a lot yeah. of challenge environments, you do want to deliver a certain amount of what's to be expected. And you can see that if you look at the winners, they're, like, almost, like, exactly what you would expect. Like, if they were going to do, like, a almost like a movie version or some kind of Netflix production True. of yeah. this, nothing is, like... None of the the chosen entries were like I would say adventurous, almost even to a fault. Like it's a very expected way in how they at least chose the winners for this challenge. So that's something you want to even for, even for the brush sauce challenges. A lot of people try to go as creative as they can off the prompt, but in all, in most yeah. cases, that's not a very good thing to do. No, it's true, and that that kind of like your callouts kind of lead me into the. The last tip that I that I wanted to mention is that um, what I noticed on the Art Station Challenge is, is that you always go through the process of pre-production and then uh, production. So you want to actually design for production because you want the people that participate in the production challenges to actually choose your concept to work on. And they'll only choose your concept if they really understand what's going on. Because that's what I kind of did wrong in my concepts. It's like, I just scribble, I make characters. They're not really that 3D model friendly, some of them. Um, but like when, when we see your concepts and we see your call outs, like a modeler instantly knows what he what he needs to expect, what he can do, what challenges he'll probably run into. You all you already did some three D blocks outs uh, block outs, so they really can see what what they can do already and how they can start the project. And that's something that really helps the the, the production um, mm -hmm. crew. That, yeah, that that's a great yeah that's a great addition. So yeah, what is like one thing you know on your end that you would have done differently, or in a perfect world, like you have you know, all the time to commit to this, and you you want to go all in on a challenge? What would you have done? Maybe you just answered that in a way. What would you have done differently, or a little bit more efficiently next time? Yeah, like I just mentioned, probably I would I would design a bit more for production, maybe putting some call outs, like put in uh, some turnarounds, some dynamic turnarounds, like have them have some character, but really put some um, like 3D model friendly poses in there. Um, and I think lastly, show a bit more of the process, maybe some more iterations, maybe some more um, ideation of certain costumes or characters or um, maybe some better props. Um, I think mainly that, that yeah. and that's what i like about yours like you you just presented the acting like you're pitching the character like and you can sell them but yeah, yeah like you said production production uh, designers want to see the, i i think the, the term i get off and you know is like a paper doll pose right where they're just standing there yeah. like this yeah. so they can give it to the guy and they can make the 3d model very easily but of course it's that stuff yeah. is boring as all heck to like to of course display yeah. and show and you, you don't even end up putting a lot of that in, in a lot of portfolios because it's just like, yeah, you know, it, it takes everything special about your characters, which is the personality. It takes it almost like out of it just so it becomes like a yeah. more of like a product. Yeah, my, my tip would be uh, time management uh, because I didn't plan everything out like what I exactly wanted to show. I, I again, I, I fumbled on a lot of like images that were half started ones I didn't, you know, even use when if I if I just thought it through a little bit better I could have took the time from the unused ones and put them into like I, I remember I was scrambling the night before trying to like bust this call out for example like I would love to go back into that and do just like one more pass on it just a little more clear a little more emphasis on line weights whatever the case may be but it was a it's very much a bastardized version of what ideally I would want right. from something. It gets the idea across, it's clear, but it, it's nothing like extraordinarily pretty to look at, which is time I lost doing like, I was doing what, it was like a week four class demo. I was just doing, hey, it's architecture tonight, so we're going to do a street scene, and I, I was just painting that up, and of course carry, got carried away and spent probably like four or five more hours on that, which I didn't need to do. Still un <laughs> still unfinished from from a folder. So yeah, time management on me. I and I think for a lot of challenges is a very valuable thing. And of course, once you know your speed and how you how long it takes to produce something, you can budget for that even quite yeah. a bit better. Yeah. But like you said, like when you see it, your when you see your finished pieces, you can and you see the process that you went through. It looks 
pretty streamlined to me in, in terms of time management. I think you highlighted your strengths really well. And you did as well. So you kind of have to pick yeah, your battles. Yeah, you have to always pick your battles. And you, at the end of the day, we're always our own worst enemies. And it, exactly. you got to, exactly. it's, it's, it's a weight because it, it, everything takes resources, right? Time, energy, um, and I don't, not so much in this case money, but yeah, time and energy for, for a lot of us. So, yeah. But thank you for coming on and helping, you know, me get an insight into your work even further w with this challenge. And of course, help, hopefully we've helped some other people for future challenges to come. Yeah, it's been great. Thanks for having me. And above all, have fun. That's that's the main thing. Yes, it's got to be fun. If you're not having fun yeah. and enjoying the process, yeah. it's going to be very yeah. obvious in, your, in, in, the, in the work. Yeah. Guys, thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe if you want to see more. You can check me out on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. If you want more in-depth content from me, I teach two courses at the CG Master Academy, Architecture Design and Fundamentals of Design. If you want even more learning, you can go to BrushSauceAcademy.com and sign up for one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Join the hundreds of students around the world and start improving your art and design today. If you want to be part of a community, we have Brush Sauce on Discord. We have monthly challenges and hangouts. There are links below for everything I mentioned. Thanks again for watching and take care.